Welcome to Hayden Cooks a Lot. Tonight I'm going to be making a chocolate zucchini cake for dessert. Yes, I said zucchini. So zucchini in a chocolate cake makes it really moist, just like carrots make a carrot cake moist. You're not going to taste the zucchini in it. It just, it'll dissolve down in the cake and you won't even know it's there. Um, it is delicious. I've been making this recipe for, I think, over 20 years now, so it's really, really good. So before we get started, make sure our hair is up, sleeves are rolled, nothing on your hands or wrists, your hands are washed. So I'm going to start with uh, putting some of the ingredients in this bowl, have dry in a separate bowl. This is more of a liquid ingredient in my oils and uh, butter and stuff in here. So I'm going to start off with uh, two eggs, so two large eggs. So I'm going to crack the egg on the inside side of the bowl, get the egg out, and then I like to keep my shells on a tinfoil lined pan that I store in a cool oven, and then I end up baking my shells eventually when I have a mound of them. They don't smell or anything, they have no odor. And um, I bake them um, for at like, oh, as the oven is heating up, or I will, if I need them, I'll bake them at like 200 degrees for like 10 minutes. Or as the oven's heating up, I'll let it heat up with the oven when I'm gonna go make something. And then that will kill the salmonella and the campylobacter in the eggshells. And then I crush up the eggshells really fine and I use them in my garden because it adds calcium to the soil. And that's important when you are growing uh, peppers and tomatoes and stuff like that, but have plenty of calcium so you don't get blossom and rot. All right, so I'm going to crack on the inside side of the bowl the egg, crack, crack, okay? Put my thumb in there like an upside down heart, and then I'm gonna break my thumb open and break my heart open like that, and drippy drip drip, and then put the shells on the tray. Grab my second egg and do the same thing. Crack, crack, one more time. Put my thumb in there, upside down heart, break the heart open, drippity drip drip, okay? And I did not get any shells down in there. If I did, I could use another shell to scoop out that shell because they're attracted to each other like magnets versus me trying to stick my fingers or a spoon in there because as I do that, it'll scoot away, scoot away, scoot away, and it's hard to grab. I need to wash my hands now. I'm gonna use the back of my hand. I turned on my faucet to warm water, back of my hand to get some soap. And now I'm scrubbing my hands well just in case those eggs had something on them or in them, such as salmonella or campylobacter, because I don't want to cross-contaminate. So I'm going to pick this tray up, get it out of here, out of my way now. I'm going to close this egg carton and get that out of the way. Okay, so I have my recipe here that I have typed up. So, I have my two eggs in here. I need to add in a half of a cup of vegetable oil. So I have my liquid measuring cup. And I have a little bit of oil left in here. It's definitely not a half of a cup, so I'm not gonna bend over to eye level yet to measure. I'm gonna open up this new one of vegetable oil. There we go. And I'm gonna bend over at eye level. So I'm looking at the half cup mark directly on that red line. And I'm pouring in until it hits that red line, right in the middle of the red line, not above, not below. Okay, and there's my half cup oil. Get that out of my way. And I'm gonna pour that on top of the eggs. Okay, next thing I need, half of a cup of buttermilk. So the store, I like to use a whole milk, buttermilk if I can find it. They only had the low fat version. Ah. Oh well. Always shake your buttermilk because buttermilk separates. So buttermilk is a cultured milk. It's uh, tangy and sour, um, but it makes good muffins and good cakes and stuff like that. If you don't want to buy buttermilk, um, you could make a sour milk instead if you have milk. So to make a soured milk, you put a tablespoon of vinegar, like a white vinegar, in the bottom of your liquid measuring cup uh, for one cup of buttermilk. And then you pour milk slowly on top of it till it hits the one cup mark. And you give it a little sturdy, let it sit. And that kind of sours the milk a little bit. So this way you need a half of a cup, half of a tablespoon would be one and a half teaspoon. So if you were to do that for this recipe, you'd need one and a half teaspoons. And then you'd pour in the milk until it hit the half cup mark. But I have buttermilk, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. Again, that was a half of a cup. Again, bend over at eye level and pouring this in until it comes directly at that red line. And always make sure you shake that buttermilk. All right, let me get that out of my way. I'm gonna pour the buttermilk in on top of those ingredients. Okay, I need to add in my butter. I have one stick of butter that's been softened. You can use salted or unsalted butter, it does not matter. So I'm gonna put that in. Okay. I'm gonna start mixing some of this up. Okay, wherever scrape that butter a little bit better, get all of it out. All right, put that in my sink out of the way. I need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So one teaspoon. And carefully, no, normally you could pour this over top of another bowl in case you spill. I'm not gonna spill. So there's my teaspoon of that. Put a lid on it. Okay, stir this up. So half cup butter, half cup vegetable oil, two eggs, half cup buttermilk, teaspoon of vanilla. And I am gonna go ahead, I'm mashing up this butter a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my sugar at this point. So, I need one and three fourths cup of sugar. And where did my spoon go? Oh, it's gone. All right, let me find a spoon. I can't find a spoon. All right, so he's got a regular soup spoon. So again, for the sugar, I need one and three fourths. So. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just dip this into the container because you can dip for sugar, okay? I'm gonna spoon a little extra until it's heaping. I'm gonna use the back side of a knife and I'm going to level off that sugar. So that's one. And then here is my half cup. So another dry measuring cup. It says so on the handle what it is. So there's my half cup of that heaping. I'm gonna level that off. And then so I need a one fourth also. Okay, so one and three fourths. So a half cup and a fourth cup equal three fourths. Okay, and then that goes in. There we go. So now I'm going to stir this together. This is kind of like a okay. You can do all in one bowl is fine. But I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to do some dry ingredients separate with it. All right. This looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to measure out uh, two and a half cups of flour. All right, and that was the sugar. Let me get the flour. Spoon. So this flour you always want to spoon in. You don't dip for flour. Okay, that's keeping, back side of my knife. And I'm gonna put this in a, oh, there's my spoon. I'm gonna put this in this bowl. So I'm gonna stir these dry ingredients together. So two and a half. Okay, that's keeping, back side of my knife. Level it off. There's two, I still need a half. Here's my half cup. Dry measure cup. Remember, it says it on the handle. That's keeping. Level that off. Here we go. That's two and a half. I need a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so I am just going to eyeball that. And I'm using pink Himalayan salt. I don't have any table salt right now at the house. And that's fine. But you can use table salt. All right, I need a full teaspoon. So we're getting close. There we go, that's about a teaspoon right there. Okay, and then I need a half a teaspoon of baking powder. So when you buy baking powder, make sure that you buy aluminum free baking powder. And if you're not sure, you need to read your ingredient label. Make sure it says aluminum free. We do not want to have aluminum 
in our bodies because that's not good for us. It's a metal that's not good for us. So this calls for a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Always make sure that you check your expiration dates on this. So baking powder and baking soda make things rise. Um, this has its own leavening, um, this has its own um, acid in it to make it rise versus the baking soda, you have to add an acid and our buttermilk is our acid in this. So this has a leveler on the inside of the container. So I'm gonna dip and then scrape along that little leveler right there as I pull it out. So there's my half teaspoon of my baking powder. And I'm just gonna use this same thing. I need a teaspoon of baking soda because that, that teaspoon has the vanilla extract. So I'm gonna use this half teaspoon twice to equal my teaspoon. And when you get baking soda, you do not need to buy Arm & Hammer brand, you can buy store brand. But when you open the box, there's a little cardboard thingy. So you open it and flip this back, and this is the leveler on this container right here. So I'm gonna dip in there and then scrape that on that lever. That's a half teaspoon. I need a full teaspoon, so I'm gonna do this twice. There we go. All right, and now I'll get that out of the way. And I need a third of a cup of baking cocoa. I like to buy Hershey's brand of baking cocoa. That's what tastes good to me. So a third of a cup. And here's my one third dry measuring cup. And I'm gonna get my spoon out of my cloud. And this will stain. So you need to be careful not to get this baking cocoa powder on your clothes. So I'm very carefully, and it likes to, um, if like you cough or laugh too hard or something or other, you could blow this across the kitchen. So I'm gonna be very careful getting this in here. Um, and, there we go. I don't want to on my clothes and stain my clothes. Now I'm very carefully gonna level this off back into the jar. All right, so that's my one third cup. This is not a sweet chocolate. This is like, um, it's a cocoa that you'd have to mix with sugar and stuff if you're gonna uh, make something chocolatey. So this is unsweetened. All right, so. I have the butter, the oil, the eggs, the buttermilk, the sugar, the vanilla. I have the flour, the salt, the baking powder, the baking soda, and the cocoa. So I'm gonna give these dry ingredients here a stir together. Okay. I'm incorporating all the dry together. That looks good. Okay, so we're supposed to add in, supposed to be add the dry to the wet. Now I just realized I made a mistake and this, look, this is what happens sometimes when you're baking your cooking. I should have put my dry ingredients in here and my liquid ingredients in here because this bowl is bigger. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'll try it, we'll see what happens. So dry goes into the liquid. So I am going to spoon this in. And probably will, it looks like it'll fit, but I usually like to mix in a, a bigger bowl. All right, so mixing that in, and this is a cake that you do by hand, okay? So I'm not using a mixer on it is what I mean by that, using a stand or a hand mixer. So mixing that in, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this dry into it, okay. And then stirring this in. If I stir too fast, I might make that cocoa mixture fly out at me. So I don't want to wear the batter or the flour mixture. So I'm stirring it and it's coming together well. And to soften your butter, you can leave it sitting, the butter stick sitting out for a couple hours on your counter. Um, to make it go faster, you can take your butter stick, open up the wrapper, slice it up into multiple pieces, smaller pieces, and then let it lay out on the wrapper individually, and that will help to soften it um, to room temperature. Okay, I'm gonna add the rest of this in. Okay. And I am going to need to switch bowl. Oh, see what I did? I just blew that out. All right, so that happens sometimes. I am going to switch bowls here 
in a second because I still need to add in my zucchini. All right. So now it's getting pretty thick in here. Pretty thick batter. All right, so now I'm gonna scrape this out and get it in the bigger bowl, which is the one I should have put that stuff in to begin with. And that's okay. We make adjustments when we make mistakes. It's no big deal. And everybody makes mistakes when you cook, including me. All right. There we go. Oh, one little bit. Get out of there. All right. That looks good. Okay. Get that out of the way. All right. So my batter's kind of thick down here in the bowl. Working that, making sure it's completely incorporated before I go on to my next step. Move this stuff out of my way. Okay. So behind me, I have the zucchini that I've already started to shred up. And here we go, that's ready. Pull this out. So I have my cutting board. I washed my zucchini, dried it, cut off the bottom of the zucchini, and this is the little stem end here at the top that's left over on the large whole side of your cheese grater. I'm holding this handle, pushing down on it to hold it still, and the cutters are right here. I need to watch my fingers, and you cut on the down. So down, 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 as I go to grate this into little tiny shredded up pieces, okay? And I wanna be careful that I do not, I'm watching what I'm doing, I'm not talking to someone next to me because I could shred my fingertips and I don't wanna do that. All right, so that's down to the little nubbin right there, okay, and that's the little stem end that's left. Okay, I'm going to, I don't, well, let me just wait. So inside here, is a bunch of the zucchini, and we need to have two cups of shredded zucchini, which is two small zucchinis. So I'm not gonna bother to measure because two small zucchinis will work just fine in this recipe. So you don't need to have the large zucchinis. Now, the cutters are on the down, so that's why I'm wiping up, so I don't get cut. I can put my hand inside of this and pull out the stuff. It's not sharp on the inside, okay? All right, so there's my zucchini shreds. Okay, and I did not need to peel the zucchini first. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put the zucchini right inside of my cake. And you're thinking, what, vegetables and cake? Yes, I'm telling you, it's really good. You're gonna like it, it adds good moisture in here. All right, so that's good. Get rid of this, give my hand a rinse. Okay, and now I'm going to carefully stir the zucchini in. So I'm gonna go around, up and over, and I'm folding in the zucchini and stirring it in. I don't need to worry about deflating anything with a regular fold, like as if I was using whipped cream or whipped egg white. I'm just gonna get it stirred in pretty well. So I'm just doing a fold technique where I go around, up and over to get it in, making sure I scrape the center and the sides of my bowl. And I'm using a rubber scraper to do that because it will scrape well as I go around. All right, and this looks really good. It smells heavenly. Should I taste this batter? No, why should I not taste this batter? There's a couple reasons. Number one, there's raw eggs in it. Raw eggs, again, could have salmonella or campylobacter in it. And number two, there's raw flour in here. Flour has to be cooked before you taste it. So flour could have E. coli in it or other things too that can make you sick. And lately I've noticed on some of the flour wrappers, they're actually putting that on the bags now. Uh, do not eat, must cook first, don't eat raw flour. I've seen different things on there. So the batter is ready. I have a cake pan. Before I started the video, I greased it. You can use some uh, short name. Scoop off a little bit with a piece of paper towel, rub it around the sides and the bottoms and in the corners of the pan, 
And then after I did that, I took a little handful of flour, sprinkled the flour here, and then over top my sink, I went like this, bang, 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 and I rotated it all the way around. So this got completely coated, greased and floured pan so the cake will not stick in there. All right, so now I need to put the batter into the cake pan. So when I do that, I'm gonna be dumping it in the center. All right, so as I dump it into the center, it will spread out on its own. And I'm rubber scraping the sides. It smells heavenly. It smells like a delicious chocolate right now. And I cannot wait to taste this. But we're not done. After we have the batter in the pan, we're gonna do a little something, something on top. All right, so scraping that out. Okay, rubber scrape my bowl, because this is money, and I need to eat the money. I do not want to waste the money and put the money down the drain. All right, so rubber scrape every last drop out. And again, don't be tempted to lick your fingers or the spatula or the bowl. You do not need to get sick. All right, so now I'm gonna spread it out corner to corner. Mmm, that looks good. And this is a nine by 13 metal baking pan. Okay, perfect. rid of that. Now, I am going to take chocolate chips, semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can use milk chocolate, you can use dark chocolate, it doesn't matter. You can use white chocolate. I like semi-sweet. I'm going to take a small handful of this and I'm going to sprinkle it and scatter it across the top of the cake. cake is still going to rise, no problem, with the chocolate chips on top of it. These are going to keep their shape in the cake, actually. They're not going to melt. And we'll add a little something on top that makes it taste good. All right, so we're about done. So just scatter a little bit. So there's probably, oh, somewhere maybe about a third of a cup of chocolate chips across the top of it. It's about how much that's there. Okay. Put the lid back on there. And now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to also sprinkle on top a little bit of granulated sugar. So you can use sugar in the raw, turbinado sugar, which is a little bit thicker crystals. I just like the regular plain sugar on this. Okay, so I'm going to have a big spoon here and I'm just sprinkling on the sugar evenly across the top of the cake. And this makes it have an interesting little crust on the top of it when it comes out of the oven. And it makes good texture. All right, a little bit more. So this is probably, oh, somewhere between, probably about three tablespoons, two, two to three tablespoons worth of sugar that I'm sprinkling on. And I don't make dessert all that often, but every now and then you just feel like a little dessert. Okay, so that's it. So I put that on. I'm going to put it in my preheated oven. My oven was set at 325 degrees. I'm going to put my oven mitts on. I'm going to put it in the oven, in the center of the oven. And then I'm going to set, close the door and then set my timer for 40 minutes. And then I'm going to check my cake. So at the 40 minute mark, I'm gonna look through the window with the light on and I'm gonna see, did it rise all the way or is the center of the cake still down? It's the center will be the last to rise up, okay? So I'm looking at the middle of the cake is what I wanna see. Did it rise? Does it look nice and domed? And if at the 40 minute mark, if I see that, then I'm gonna get out a toothpick and I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna stab that toothpick all the way down to the bottom and all the way back up, not in the middle of the chocolate chip though, I'm gonna get next to it and then Check it. Is the batter completely cooked that's on it? Um, so, or do I see wet, slimy batter attached to my toothpick? And if I do, then I need to add on a few, um, you know, could be two minutes, could be three minutes, four minutes, I don't know, just depends. So that's what I'm gonna do, 325, 
40 minutes. So we'll check back in a few and see how it looks. Okay, so the cake just came out of the oven at the 40 minute mark. I stuck a toothpick down in the very center and pulled it out. And you can see cooked crumbs on the top of that toothpick. So that's what it looks like when it is finished or it could swipe out clean. And you know that it's done. And this is smelling heavenly in here. It smells like a chocolate factory right now. So this is what it looks like. And that sugar crust on the top of it makes it like this crackly, crispy looking thing. It's really good. Um, so it was a little puffier than this when it came out. So after it comes out, it softens down and, and slowly goes down just a little bit because it was puffed all the way to the top just a minute ago. Um, you're not supposed to cut a cake when it's hot, but I can't wait. So, I'm gonna dig into this thing because I need to taste it. So, they brought me a fork. All right, mm. okay, so let's see here. Ooh. Mm. That smells delicious. Okay, get this turner down in there. Try to lift this thing out. It is hot. It's supposed to cool before you do this. So I want you to see what the inside looks like. So nice and moist. It's delicious. I've made this a ton of times. And I actually made this one time for a friend of mine who she would only eat white stuff, white pasta, white bread, white chocolate, white this, white that. Like she didn't eat any vegetables at all, um, but she did like chocolate. So she came over to my house one time and I made the chocolate zucchini cake and she was digging into it. And she was on her second piece and then all of a sudden she was like, what is in here? Because she saw a little tiny speck of green and I was like, girl, you've been eating chocolate zucchini cake. She freaked out, but she liked it. So she ended up having three pieces. She liked it that much. So, smells good, hot and steamy. Steam's coming off of it still. And I'm gonna taste it. Mmm. This is good. You need to try it. It's delicate, it's soft, it's moist, it falls apart. You got that little bit of that sugar crust on top. You can barely even tell there's zucchini and there's a tiny little speck of green here and there. This is wonderful, I'm telling you. This will be great with some coffee on the side or a glass of cold milk. Mmm, well, mmm, you need to try this. Chocolate zucchini cake. Thanks for joining me.